Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc. I'm here at the Haas School of Business with uh, Joe Hellerstein, who is a professor here at the um, Computer Science Department at Berkeley and also the co-founder of Trifacta. Uh, welcome, Joe. Thanks. Good to be here. So, Joe, uh, here um, at Haas, we've been um, doing a lot in data science, right? The MBAs, they understand that they need to understand the basics of, of data science so that they can manage data science teams. And that's usually the part of the data operation that interfaces most frequently with the, the decision makers. Um, but on the other hand, there's this whole uh, data architecture and data engineering piece, which is a prerequisite for any sensible uh, data science. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the, the significance and the relevance of getting data engineering right? And for the business decision makers, how can they begin to approach managing this whole data engineering enterprise? Oh, that's great, great topic. So, you know, data science still, I think, in corporate, uh, in corporations around the world, I should say, um, it's a little bit of a 1% problem. It's kind of the exotica, um, and the data engineering IT functions are the core of the computing and the data processing that goes on in an organization. Um, so there's a legacy of technologies that most uh, enterprises have around from the 90s, uh, around um, transactional data and data warehousing, and uh, just getting the facts of what's going on in the business and getting them compiled together for reporting both to executives and to uh, regulators. Like that stuff is not considered data science. It's not sexy, but it makes businesses go. This is companies like Oracle and um, Informatica, Teradata. Um, These are big companies that do lots and lots of business. SAP, world's largest software vendor. Um, so that stuff, like you have to have that in most businesses today. Um, and the organizations that manage, procure, uh, and uh, set strategy for that are at the center of most purchasing decisions around any tech in these companies, so that includes the data science tech. Um, most of that still goes through IT and big businesses, and you have to understand what motivates them, where their pain is, and, mm -hmm. and how to work with them to get business problems solved. But most, most of these legacy organizations, when they started um, gathering up the data, they were gathering it up for specific purposes, like financial reporting or, or procurement, and uh, they may not have anticipated the day when you needed to um, uh, look across all the different silos. Um, what, how, how difficult is the challenge of, of a legacy organization that's, arc, that's, that's organized in that way compared to, say, a digital first company? Yeah, so this is where things have gotten really interesting in the last decade or so, is that pretty much across the board, organizations in all sorts of industries are trying to go from using data as a bottom line cost of things you have to do to get stuff right, to exploiting data as a top line value generation. Uh, it makes you more competitive, it allows you to interact better with your customers um, and all those good things. And that requires both new uses of the data you already had, and also the acquisition of new kinds of data that you didn't have before. Um, so the whole uh, prevalence of mobile, and even just going back to web interfaces to things like banking and retail, um, provided a wealth of data that wasn't required to be in these data warehouses for uh, reporting, but boy, it's got a lot of goodness. And so marketing departments tended to be where this first took off. Um, and y you start to see reports, Gartner will say that, you know, marketing spend on IT will be bigger than IT spend on IT starting in 2018 or 2020 or some year like that. Um, and that really happens in the field. What that's caused is that these legacy organizations now have more than one power center around technology, uh, and there's new negotiations about how decisions get made about strategy and procurement. Uh, so it's very interesting times, both inside these companies and also as a vendor of software to these companies. Now I've heard in addition to having shadow IT departments in, in marketing, we're also seeing shadow IT departments emerge in, in HR and in, in finance and in all sorts of areas. Um, how how can I sort of CIOs or, or, or CTOs or even now these new you know CDOs um, uh, regain relevance and and you know figure out ways to to uh, bridge all these different um, isolated pockets of, of of data processing that's happening in the organization? Yeah. So first of all, the phrase shadow IT is so telling, right? Because it, it it it's the viewpoint that there's real IT. Yeah. And then there's this other stuff, which is shadowy and, and maybe bad and certainly not real. Well, it's certainly something that, that freaks out a lot of the CIOs, right? It, it, Some. Uh, but I think what happens in a lot of these organizations is they evolve that view over time, and you start hearing people talk about self-service IT or self-service data X for various X tasks. Uh, and what that is is an admission that IT actually doesn't want to own all this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the tasks that are required in these things. They want to offload to the lines of business. Um, but governance through IT of the data is still important. And so you try to figure out and renegotiate both the architecture of the software and the lines of responsibility around 
who gets to see what data, who gets to bring in what technology, and how do you track the behaviors and the activities of the organization so you stay in compliance with things like privacy mm -hmm. laws uh, as well as uh, you know account accountancy. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that stuff in forward-looking, even legacy organizations, um, is less of a discussion about shadow IT recently and more about self-service. Mm -hmm. uh, allowing the line of business to be self-service. You know, the way we talk about it at Trifecta is you want the people who know the data best to be the ones who are working with it. The folks in IT really don't want to iterate with you a hundred times about, well, maybe I'd like the data like this. You know what, I didn't want it like mm -hmm. this. I want it like that. They have better things to do, actually. So they're, in many of these organizations, actually happy to offload that work. Now, you're, you're, an, uh, you're a professor of, uh, of computer science. Um, what inspired you to go and create a company like Trifecta? Yeah, this one was easy because we had users and the users were just you know, really happy to have the tech. So we built an open source tool and Trifecta is a very visual uh, product. It's a product for visual end user or self-service uh, data preparation. So you get messy, yucky data, you can see what's wrong with it and clean it up yourself without coding. Uh, and so when we launched the first version of this on the web, at, it was actually at Stanford, because st the student who was working out was at Stanford. Um, we had tens of thousands of users, journalists and other people uh, who had just little data sets that were all messed up that they wanted to clean. And so it was very clear that like, there's a hunger for um, end user solutions uh, to data preparation. And we started hearing from users, this is back in 2011, that 80% of their time was spent munging data, wrangling data, cleaning data, whatever word they used. There wasn't even really an accepted name for it. Uh, and so we felt like we were working on an important problem, uh, but one that was super relevant. And honestly, you know, building something on campus is cool, but the idea of getting financing to really build a full service uh, solution here with full scale of data and a variety of data sources in the real world context, that was a pretty exciting challenge. So we decided to go for it. Uh, and really our mission, because we are computer scientists at the end of the day, our mission was to change the way that people work with computers and data. Like that for us is fun. Uh, to really innovate and leave a, leave, a, leave a mark there. So yet another uh, Berkeley academic entrepreneur. Thanks for coming in, Joe. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm.